You can describe the A's in many ways these days, but one thing you can't call them is a team that's in last place. You are Locked On A's, your daily Oakland A's podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, A's fans, and welcome to Locked On A's, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, where it's your team every day. This is the daily podcast. We talk about your Oakland A's all year long. I am your host, Paul Francis Sullivan. Please call me Sully. I've been a baseball podcaster for a while now, and this is my sixth full season here on the Lockdown Podcast Network. I'm usually the host of Lockdown MLB, and I still am. I'm still dropping five of those a week. I'm dropping five of these a week. So there you can watch 10 episodes with your pal Sully every week from now to the end of the regular season. You can follow us at Lockdown A's on Twitter or whatever it's called now. And on Instagram, oh, where's my lower thread? Took it off. I'm your pal Sully, but Sully Baseball on Twitter, Sully Baseball Podcast on Instagram. And today's episode is brought to you by Prize Picks, the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Go to prizepicks.com slash locked on MLB. Use code all lowercase locked on MLB for a first deposit match up to $100. Uh, first, let me just deal with one little technical thing. Uh, I know a couple of you were in uh, the attempted live stream I tried to do earlier this evening. I had a huge tech problem and uh, I shut it off and I decided to just record a full episode here. Uh, it's not a live episode. So for those of you who are in on the live stream, I apologize for the tech problem. Um, let's just talk a little bit about the, the big thing that happened on Monday. Uh, the A's had the, the wild two game series with the giants in front of about 30,000 a game. Uh, today, uh, they had one tenth the size of the crowd that they had over the weekend, but those who showed up saw something really cool. A well-pitched, well-played game between Tampa Bay and the A's. And it was everything you'd want in an A's win. Blade homered early, but they also got another run, which they manufactured with the run in the uh, fifth inning. And Boyle, good old Joe Boyle, came up from the farm. He was set back down for a little bit, and he came up. And went up against Taj Bradley, who's been a very good pitcher for this very strange Tampa Bay Rays team, uh, where sometimes they look fantastic and sometimes they look like they can't get out of their own way. Right now, uh, the the Rays are at an even 62 and 62, which is on the outside looking into the playoffs. Now, Br- Bradley didn't pitch badly. He let up the two-run home run to Blade in the first inning, and... Uh, He pitched pretty well the rest of the game. But here's the deal. Boyle was tremendous. He was tremendous. He he walked three batters. Sorry for my itchy nose. He let up a pair of hits, but he never let the other team, he never let the Rays get something going. They didn't have a single extra base hit the entire night. In fact, they just got a single from Diaz and from Lowe. It was either Lowe or Lau. Because it's your guess of how anyone pronounces L O W E on the Rays. However, by having uh, uh, Boyle pitch very well, Hallman pitched well. He struck out a pair of batters in the seventh. Ferguson came out in the eighth, struck out two. And then it was Miller time. And Miller, he did walk a batter, but he struck out a batter, pitched one shutout inning. Now, Okay, he got the save, which was his 19th save of the year. He lowered his ERA to 1.89. Now, I have my own thoughts on the save rule. I think some saves are ridiculous. When you're up three runs with as dead as the Rays' offense looked, I don't think that should be a save. I'm sorry. And this is nothing at Mason Miller. I, I would absolutely use Mason Miller to close out game one of that series. And so, you know, as I said, you win game one of the series, you put the other team on their heels. They have to win out on the road. It puts the A's in the perfect position against Tampa Bay. And I absolutely would bring in Miller to close it out. I don't think that's a save. I understand that the rules say it's a save. They say uh, if you complete the game where it's a, a, you know, a three run or fewer lead and you close it out, you get a save. When you have a dominant pitcher like Mason Miller 
and you're you have that three run cushion. I, there was zero tension in that ninth inning for me, at least. This reminds me. I remember there was a game I saw in the it was either in the nineties or the early two thousands when Tampa Bay was truly awful, and I was watching a game between the Yankees and the Rays, and the Yankees had a three run lead. This was the Joe Torre. Bernie Williams, Derek Jeter, David Cohn, you know, uh, Rivera, Posada, the, that level Yankee team that we're talking about there. And Rivera came out and faced the bottom of the Rays order, which were like basically three minor leaguers. And the Yankees had a three-run lead, and he got a save. And I remember thinking to myself, eh, what, is that a save? I mean, he closed the game out. And they got the win, but was the game ever really on the line as he faced three minor leaguers whose knees were trembling? You know, and I had the same, not that Miller is Mariano Rivera, but the way he's been pitching with a three run lead, the A's have more runs than the Rays have hits. Did anyone think that Miller was going to blow that? Yes, yes, I know. He blew a, a, a critical save to Tampa earlier this year, but. And it would buy that this was going to be a, a loss for the A's. And uh, I, I have what I call, you know, because I'm a raging egotist, I call it the Sully save, which is you have to at least be facing the tying run in order for it to be a save, in my opinion. If you come in and you have a three-run cushion, I'm sorry. you could Miller could have let up two solo homers and get the save. You could you could do that every single time you get a save and get 20, 30 saves with an ERA over 18, or about 18. You know, that to me, you have to at least be facing the tying run when you come into the plate. Okay. If it was three to two, yeah, that's a save. Or if it's three nothing and he comes in and there's two runners on when he comes in the situation, that's a save. You have to be facing the tying run for it to be a save in my, if I created the save rule, but I didn't. And I digress because that's nitpicking about a stat, which I think is an overrated stat. Anyway, I think the win loss totals are overrated. And I think the save situation is overrated and they needed to bring Miller in, in this game because they needed to secure this one. And maybe this is why they didn't use them uh, for the second inning against San Francisco. Is they knew that uh, they had a chance, you know, they wanted to keep him so he could pitch in game one. Well, the Blade homered and uh, Boyle got the win. And they won game one of the series against Tampa Bay. And tomorrow, Tampa Bay still in town. Baz is pitching, Estes is pitching. That's uh, actually a really good matchup. That's tough. That's two very good pitchers who can sometimes be great and sometimes not. Well, I'll tell you another person who the A's should absolutely love right now, and that is a un, an unlikely Cy Young contender over there in KC, Mr. Seth Lugo. Again, I'm not a big fan of the win-loss record. If you are, he is a 14-7 and seven record, which uh, is impressive for a afterthought free agent. But the main thing is you look at his line. He pitched seven innings. He struck out eight for a surging, uh, uh, an absolutely surging Kansas City team right now. Remember, Kansas City lost 100-some-odd games last year, and now the Royals are, because of their five-game winning streak and the fact that Cleveland's in a three-game losing streak, Kansas City's only two and a half games out of first place, three back in the loss column. Now, I think Cleveland's a better team, and I think Cleveland will ultimately win that division. But holy Phil Esposito, holy Jamie Quirk, holy Hal McRae, holy Buddy Bianca Lana. Kansas City, who is a wildcard team as of this recording, could potentially win the division. But what does that mean for the A's? The fact that they beat the Angels, that means... The A's have climbed out of the cellar. That's what it means. That the A's have a better record than the Angels. The A's are 54 and 71. The Angels are 53 and 72. What a horrific 
absolutely grotesque uh, indictment of the Angels that they can't beat the A's. They can't, at this point, the A's can control their own destiny to not finish in last place in their final year in Oakland. They have 37 games left, and all they have to do is match the Angels. Win, just have identical records the same way. And we could say on this, this strange, sort of this strange, bizarre season with all these horrible things going on behind the scenes and the fact that you have the lying owners, you have the gutted payroll, you have the team that's basically putting a middle finger up to their fans. And the A's, who are going to be so much better than they were last year, could say, hey, hey, we didn't finish in last place. We didn't finish in last place. And with that, if the A's win just nine more games the rest of the way, as we enter late August, just win nine more games, win four in August and five in September, that's if everything goes wrong, they will have avoided 100 losses which was the first big goal. Avoid 100 losses. Don't finish in the cellar. Okay. Then we'll worry about not losing 90 games and taking the sights on the Rangers and the Pirates. Now, the Rangers did win uh, 4-3 to three, uh, against Pittsburgh. So the A's are still um, three and a half games behind the Rangers, but that's still possible. And as for Seattle, who are falling like an absolute rock, uh, the A's are only, jeez, the A's are only nine games back in the loss column of Seattle. So we'll talk about that a little bit in the next segment. But uh, holy Toledo, the A's are actually hitting some of those marks we were hoping for. Passion, drive, and patience, that's the formula for winning championships. It's also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motor has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. Superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. With your into speed, power, style, eBay Motors has you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need and the prices you want, it's easy to make your car the MVP and bring home huge wins. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only, exclusion supply, eBay guaranteed fit is only available to U.S. customers. Thanks for making Locked On A's your first listen today. For a second listen, enjoy more of me, your pal Sully at Locked On MLB, where I provide the national view with a little bit of my point of view to help get you ready for the Major League Baseball playoffs here in the dog days of summer. Prepare for the fall classic with me, your pal Sully. I've got it covered from every angle every single day. I'm locked on MLB, available on YouTube or wherever you get your podcast. part of the Lockdown Podcast Network where it's your team every day. Um, so, yeah, I mean, the A's, not a last place team. Of course, they're playing in Sacramento, but they are improving. They are improving, and with their improving, and with teams like the Rangers and the Diamondbacks and the Royals as inspiration, maybe the good folks in Sacramento will see a halfway decent team. Now, there's an intriguing uh, story happening in the A's farm. The A's had the number one, uh, had, uh, was it the number four overall pick in the draft earlier this year, and they drafted Nick Kurtz. And Kurtz is a first baseman. And, of course, you're thinking, why would they take the number four pick overall? Why would they pick a first baseman? Why not pick a this? Why not pick a that? Well, maybe they thought he's going to be a major league uh, hitter. Maybe they think, hey, maybe he's going to have a decent bat and will find his way up to the major leagues before you know it. Well, they did not look so dumb. The Wake Forest star who played uh, for Wake Forest this year and hit big home run, big home run totals, and a left-handed power hitter. His first, he went to the Stockton team, single A, right to Stockton, and this is what he did in seven games. Now, granted, it's seven games. He hit four home runs in seven games. He drove in twelve runs in seven games. If you like batting average, his batting average was four hundred. 
you like on base percentage, his on base percentage was 571. If you like slugging, it was 960. So in those seven games, he had an OPS of 1.531. Why am I bringing this up? Because the A's are already bringing him up to double A. They took one look and said, no, see how you can do a double A. And he is now going to Midland. He is going to be the first baseman at Midland. Now, he is being billed as the next big offensive star for the A's and will be probably on the Sacramento team. Chances are he's going to be in Triple A next year with a chance to get to the uh, major leagues by the time we're mid, probably midway through the 2025 season, making that huge leap from college to the majors. Let me ask you a question, you, my faithful listeners here, my everyday A's listeners here. Do you think he's going to make it to Oakland? I'm serious. This is someone who is going to be the next, probably the next big slugger for the A's. Now, I'm not the best at forecasting these players who are going to be big prospects, but what if he comes up? Right now, their first baseman is Brown. Seth Brown is their primary first baseman right now. And I like Seth Brown. And of course, he's also a left-handed hitter. And he is, he is, uh, you know, he's been with the team all year. He's not had a great year. He's had some big hits, but it's not like he has been an absolute superstar. You can't platoon him with Kurtz because, well, you know, he's, uh, you, you can't platoon him with him because he's, they're both left-handed. And if Tyler Soderstrom winds up, you know, coming back from the from the injured list, yeah, you can't really platoon him either. So it's not like first base has been uh, a superstar position for the A's this year. And when you take a look, I mean, I mean Davis has been traded away. Tyler Navit, like who is who else has been the first baseman? Noda is not on the 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 major league roster right now. Soderstrom is injured. It hasn't been great. Um, Nevin, as I said, has been the, the primary first baseman for a big chunk of the year. And they've been also playing, um, Seth Brown and Seth Brown is in many ways more of a utility guy. I mean, he plays, he plays a lot of outfield. He, he's kind of a, 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 a bat who can bounce around and the A's are looking to possibly finish outside of, you know, as they're taking, they're already in fourth. They're aiming for Texas to see if they can finish in third. They're also aiming to avoid 100 losses. And if they continue play, if they just keep playing at above 500 level baseball, they can avoid 90 losses. They could be a situation where they improve by 13 or 14 games from last year. And what if having a big sort of, uh, burst of electricity from the future slugger of the A's, Nick Kurtz. Could he come up? Could he be a player on the major league roster? And could he be the final big star of the Oakland A's as they move on to Sacramento, which I have said here, I believe is the city where they'll be playing for the rest of their their days. It kind of reminds me of when the A's were playing out the string in Kansas City Reggie Jackson made his debut as a member of the Kansas City A's. So he became the big superstar for the Oakland A's, but he started it off with KC. If Kurtz is going to become the one of the big superstars of the Sacramento A's, well, maybe give A's fans here a chance to welcome them to the big leagues and say, hey, at least begin your career in a major league stadium, albeit one that's crumbling. I, for one, am rooting for Kurtz to return. Why? Well, it would be fun. It'd be electric. And maybe it would give us a little bit of a reason to follow the team into Sacramento. Prize Picks is America's number one daily fantasy sports app with over 5 million active members. PrizeFix is the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Unlike other apps on PrizeFix, it's just you versus the numbers. All you do is pick more than or less than 
on two to six player staff projections and watch the winnings roll in. Get it on the daily action with your friends and become part of the Prize Picks community today. And you can now win 100 times your money on Prize Picks with as few as four correct picks. You can turn $10 into a thousand. Prize Picks is available in more than 30 states across the country, including Texas, California, and right here in California, also Georgia. Those are states. Download the Prize Pick app today. Use the code LOCKDOWNMOB for a first deposit match up to $100. That's code locked on MLB on Price Picks for a deposit match up to one hundred dollars. Price Picks, run your game. Thanks for making Locked On A's your first listen today. Now check out more of me on Locked On MLB podcast. I'm getting you prepared for the fall classic. We got covered every single day. Find Locked On MLB in the description, so you need to search. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. It's your team every day. All right, well, I'm trying to get through. So we got a couple of tech glitches here, so let's kind of wrap this show up here. I'm going to read a couple more uh, viewer mail here. I talked about we had a couple of people who were not happy with my praising of the Kenseiko legacy, but uh, one of the people who was certainly in agreement with me is William.92255. Jose Kenseiko is a Hall of Famer in my book. I loved watching him when I was a kid. I love it. I'll read your book. Uh, speaking of the books, the other day I was talking about how the uh, A's could – we know they could pass the Angels, and they did that. They have the Rangers in their sights, and I point out if the Mariners keep collapsing, there's an outside chance the A's could finish their final year in Oakland as a second-place team. And Mark Sujin 4570 said, So, Sully, you are drinking the green and gold Kool-Aid if you think the A's might catch the Mariners. All I can say, old pal, Sully, is pour me a mug of that Kool-Aid. Why not? Come on, let's think big. Let's think big. Imagine their final season in Oakland with no money, no support from the management, absolutely no hope at all, and they finish in second place. That would be a thing of glory. You you know it, and I know it. All right. Well, the A's are going to be going in. They have a, a... they start game two of the series against the Tampa Bay Rays in the all we desperately need a new stadium. Uh, but what we're doing is absolutely ridiculous matchup. As I mentioned before, uh, we have the uh, Baz versus Estes. So we're going to see what happens. So follow us at Locked On A's on Twitter or whatever it's called now and on Instagram. I'm your pal Sully. I'm at Sully Baseball on Twitter, Sully Baseball Podcast on Instagram. Talking about the fourth place A's and seeing how well things will shape up. This has been Locked On A's. I am your host, Paul Francis Sullivan. Please call me Sully.